I suppose a good place to start is in the garden. A garden is a perpetual work in progress. Things develop over time in surprising ways. Plants get leggy and heavy and need cutting back, perhaps moving somewhere with more shade or in order to make room for something else to grow. The space in a garden needs to be constantly renewed and managed or you can choose to let it go wild. I see my work in the same way, as unfinished business, which can be as much a pleasure as a torment. I'm a perfectionist and I'm always driving towards conclusions in order to satisfy my vision. My studio at home is off the kitchen and leads onto the garden. While making, I grapple and battle with different materials in order to explore the forms that emerge, simultaneously letting a material do what it does naturally and getting it to do what I want. I enjoy handling different media, trying things out, finding solutions, confronting limitations and building upon them. I am not interested in hierarchies or boundaries between disciplines. I'm only interested in possibilities, things that I haven't seen, made or experienced yet. I make with cloth, fibre and thread as structural materials for working in three dimensions, often incorporating soft sculptural elements, wood, wire, yarn and paper in my pieces. I'm excited by the distinct qualities of each material and how they may be worked together, balanced and contrasted within space. Risk-taking is inherent in the making process, and this is what drives me. I will often incorporate errors and accidental discoveries which are arrived at through the process of production. The perpetual experimentation informs and ever expands my concepts and vision. More often than not, there are half a dozen artworks in development at any one time. Through this range of work in progress, many dynamic parallels form between the pieces when they are juxtaposed in space. Colour and soft geometry play important roles as I construct and deconstruct each piece. Structures build, forms recur, threads tangle and colour dances and I capture the excitement that I'm chasing. Making is a mysterious process, but I feel that I know it well by now. I recognise the stages involved. I understand the tension and the fact that sometimes you have to wait for answers. Something always happens if you make, and I like the journey. As a child, I used to stare at the wall in my bedroom and imagine things on it. Murals, projections, fantastic imagery. As a shy child, I took solace in things and stuff. My mother and grandmother were both brilliant makers, sewing, knitting, cut work, dressmaking and cake decorating. Here are two of my grandmother's working drawings which I treasure. She made this painting after she'd suffered a stroke. Earlier this year I installed a striking new commission, Loom, at Facebook London offices, part of the Facebook Air programme of International Artist Residencies. Sighting work in central London has particular meaning and significance for me, as my family on both my mother and father's side are Londoners, and many of them were in creative occupations. On my father's side, there is French Huguenot ancestry. Some were silk weavers, fancy trimmings manufacturers, stationers, leather workers and cabinet makers, living and working in Spitalfields. The silk weaver Pierre Joinville emigrated to the UK in 1740 from Saint-Pierre-le-Vigier, near Dieppe. Working silk weavers proudly hung spindles outside their houses in order to identify themselves to passers-by. The first to be named refugees, the Huguenots supported themselves by working for the master weavers and by selling handmade embellishments for clothing on the side, rosettes, birds and butterflies. On the same family line, beginning in the 1950s, 
my grandfather Douglas worked in data programming and with the first computers at Walthamstow Town Hall. It is of great curiosity to me that the punch card system of the Jacquard loom inspired the punched card technology of early computers, that pointillism, pixelation, weaving, beadwork and cross-stitch are structurally and conceptually related. My recent research into handloom weaving with Dash and Miller and the Bristol Weaving Mill and a fascination with my own family heritage have inspired this new work for Facebook. In order to create loom, I made myself work like a computer, assembling data in a sequence. The piece was constructed from a digital pointillist painting, then broken down into a handwritten code. This code was reconstructed exactly and manually, realised in bespoke, hand-cut and machine-stitched cloth. The National Festival of Making took place last June in Blackburn, Lancashire. As part of Season 3 of Art in Manufacturing, I was artist-in-residence at Forbo Flooring, a local carpet tile manufacturer in Bamber Bridge. New artwork was co-commissioned by the National Festival of Making and Super Slow Way. During my first visit to Forbo, I picked up a pile of tangled, pale grey, voluminous threads from the shop floor, which were the last offcuts of the tufting process. They had been knotted by hand at one end by an operator in bundles of about 100 lengths. From the discovery of these threads, I have developed a series of artworks using the same yarn. The Aquafil synthetic crimp yarn changes from a fine silky appearance when just off the cone, becoming bulky and fluffy after being steamed. In one area of the factory, the mezzanine, there is a library of leftover yarn and three smaller tufting machines. Here I found a container piled high with tufted carpet top cloth in an array of different colours. These were samples created by one of the operators of the factory, which were no longer needed and had been set aside for recycling. I incorporated these top cloths in the first artwork, entitled Offcut Tuft. The second piece, Offcut Cord, seen here in a performance, resembles the embellishments created for furnishing and clothing from antiquity to the present. Tassels and trimmings known as passamontery were made by my Huguenot ancestors. I enjoy experiencing patterns and look to the visual rhythms they possess. I have often contemplated how patterns might expand and contract through my work. In the factory, changeover is when the threads are heat sealed together to tuft continuously from one colour to the next in order to produce different coloured top cloth. It is a lovely process to witness as the arrangement of lined up threads one colour next to another create hanging curved forms. Once the threads are bonded, a fine fringing is left at the ends ready to be cut off and discarded. As the different coloured yarns transition, the off-cut cloths that are generated have triangular or stepped patterns within the tufted surface. The systematic linear arrangement of threads in the changeover and tufting process have inspired the third piece in the series, Offcut Ends. At Queen Street Mill, the pieces were seen in a textile heritage context, but also within a space that has striking and unique visual qualities. The light in parts of the mill is interrupted by elements from the weaving process stored high above the ground on wooden beams. Hundreds of spare heels with their trailing threads are stacked together, creating a dense and slatted texture that patterns and partitions the ceiling spaces. The artwork was placed within the existing textural landscape of the mill, drawing parallels with the taut threads of the working hand looms, the repetitious forms of spools and cones of yarn which are dotted about the space, and the miraculous pattern formations of woven cloth. Through my work, I make connections with the past, for the future, and within myself.